Are you guys curious how the rank 1 player in Europe plays? Today we are spectating Tiop, who is the rank 1 player in Europe and also the best Evelyn player. A full high elo lobby with bunch of challengers. You don't want to miss out on this one. Stay tuned and let's hop right into it. Hey what's up guys, Darkworker here and for today's video, like I said, we are going to spectate a high elo challenger lobby and the main focus will be uh, Tiop, the rank 1 player in Europe right now. I know, I mean, by the time you're watching this, there will be, there's another rank 1 player, but he's a win trader, so I don't count him. Right now, in Europe, we have the issue there are a bunch of win traders in the top 10 lobby. Um, people pay, I mean, it's Chinese players, they pay other players to give up the game so they get the win, and then they have a 95% win rate, 98% win rate, and basically, those players will get banned or put to iron. I mean, it happened in the last season as well. We had a win trader as rank 1, but before the season reset, he got demoted to iron. And hopefully this time they will just get banned, and hopefully Riot will also ban them quicker, and not wait too long. And we are actually live spectating this game. I saw, oh, Ted is in the game, and he's playing... They, I think they are actually playing trio in this game. Ted, Tiep and Metronaut. But usually, from what I can tell, Ted and Tiep usually play together. Because uh, Ted has a C account. He has 500 LP. But uh, since his account is located in C, but he's playing from Europe, his matchmaking is a little bit different. He gets plus 10, minus 10. And he finds game quicker than other players, so that's why I guess Tiep is playing with him to find matches easier, considering that he's a challenger. And for me, for example, yesterday I was one more than one hour in queue trying solo queue, and I didn't find any matches. So uh, I need to play with someone with really low MMR to find any matches, because otherwise I can't find any matches right now. Just my matchmaking rating is pretty high this season. So, I can't really find any matches in solo queue. Anyways, um, Evelyn is going for first gank onto the bot lane. Alistar flashes in, knocks them up, pushes Nami away. Evelyn puts the charm onto the Nami and they secure a freebie. Okay, let's see what they are going to do now. They might try to dive. Okay, he's going for the golems first. Leeson is coming in, but he's only level 4, he can't do too much. Level 5, he hits the S2. Ted is going to jump in, aka Kaiser, but... Okay, he's going to die to Ezreal, but Katarina is going to clean up now. Wait, can Katarina get the kill? Maybe. Okay, Evelyn is going to flash forward, jump and secure the kill onto the Ezreal. And also get the kill onto the Nami again. He already has 4 kills at this point. He is super head. But at the same time, the enemy Akali is beating up this Yasuo super hard. Already 2 solo kills onto that Yasuo. He is feeding pretty hard to this Akali. Okay, Tiop is just going for... The jungle clear again, a red buff, raptors, and then dragon is going to spawn. And for you guys wondering why I'm not showing the entire map right now and not the spectator uh, perspective from the opponents, I think it's better to look at this way. Because usually when you see the entire map, you can see the rotations, and it's it makes it too easy. Like, this way we, we can think about, okay, what is Tiep thinking in his position right now? And from his point of view, 
with the amount of vision he has, okay, where's Lee Sin going to be and stuff like that. If you already see it, you can already tell, okay, he's there and there. But this way, we can see his decision making uh, better. Because if you're spectating and see everyone's position, it's too easy for you. And you can say, oh, he should have done this and that. But you always want to see the perspective and the point of view of the player you're uh, reviewing to see, okay, was his decision making good or not? What is he planning with the amount of vision he has? Actually, later on, I will open up the map when it comes to team fighting. But right now, it's just all about thinking about, okay, what's Evelyn going to do with the amount of vision he has on the map? And what is his game plan? Um, thinking about counter jungling. Uh, thinking about the enemy listen position, what he's going to do, and how he is going to react accordingly. And this Akali! This Akali is fat. She is 6 0. She has a 2.5k gold lead onto the enemy Yasuo. Yasuo dies again. He is 1 4. He is feeding super hard. Sneaky is going for. Almost another kill onto the Katarina, she's super low life. He probably already retreated and is backporting. Evelyn is trying to check if she is still there and Cannon is going for the cleanup. Okay, Tiep is going to attack and get the kill onto... Okay, he's really scared, he's flashing out because of the Kali, and he doesn't have ultimate as well. And the person who spams uh, Surrender, I mean it's kind of obvious, it's probably the Yasuo player who is 1-4. It's like, oh, I'm feeding so much, the enemy Akali 6-0, and right now they can take the turret. Yasuo is um, fapping around, I guess. He is not going for that first turret gold. Yep, if Yasuo just attack that turret, they get that first turret gold for sure. So Yasuo not using his brain in that situation. Um, and now they are trying to force the Rift Herald. Alistair is already roaming, it's going to be 4. 4 versus 4. Let's see if they will try and commit for this. Okay, they are trying to trap. And don't get it. He is going to hit the Sonic Wave. And now Kaisa is rotating as well. She's going for the Raptor first. And probably a fight is going to happen at Rift Herald soon. Okay. Alyssa is going to engage, taking a lot of damage for that. I'm not sure if it's worth it. He has to retreat right now. They have. This is, for example, really important. Right now we can tell the map is completely dark for the red side. They have zero vision right now. Only one ward. Uh, around the river at the dragon side, but besides that, the map is completely dark for them. Akali is going to jump in and secure another kill onto this Yasuo. Katarina gets the reset, they get one kill in return, two kills. Okay, listen. Okay, Akali is going to jump in. She gets that kill. And legendary, still legendary for this Akali. Shut down in favor of. Wait, who got shut down? Kaisa got shut down! That's huge! Big shutdown for Kaisa! That's a huge shutdown. And now she has a 1.7 gold lead compared to the Ezreal. And Akali has a almost 4k gold lead compared to the Yasuo. 8.4k, almost 8.4k to 5k. And. As you guys can tell, Inferno Dragon is up. Inferno Dragon is up right now. And this is going to be huge. I mean, it got nerfed. It's no longer 8%, it's 6%, so it's 25% damage nerf. But still, 6% is still nice. It's still a nice buff if you can get it. It's not too huge to be honest. 6% is basically not too much. It's half a champion rune. Did you guys run champion rune? 10%. If you don't die. Okay. Evelyn is going to secure that Infernal Dragon by using her ultimate and smite at the same time. Evelyn is a great objective securer thanks to the percentage, percentage missing health bonus damage from that ultimate. 
going to secure that mid turret. I would have used the Rift Herald in the mid lane to be honest, to create more pressure uh, for that Inferno Dragon fight. And you guys can see the Rift Herald did zero damage at the bot lane because they didn't shove the wave. Honestly, not that great Rift Herald placement. I mean it's fine because they distracted Ezreal overall, so they managed to force mid lane, but I think putting it mid lane would have been better. They shoved mid lane, they put it there and then they just go for that Inferno force. But that's just my opinion. Okay. Tiap is looking for a sneaky ambush, I guess. Okay, he's going for that S wheel. Let's see. He's going to jump in. He's going to flash and miss the ultimate. Oh no no no. Well it was a close one. It was a close one to be honest. Akali jumping in. Akali cleaning up. Wait, Akali triple kill? Quad kill! Akali quad kill! And now they can go for the uh, Baron buff. It's a huge swing into the favor of the blue side. This Akali is basically playing a 1 vs 9 game. He got super fed by this Yasuo and now he's just snowballing. And to be honest I have no idea how Yasuo can die two times before level 4. Kaiser is going to jump in super aggressive. He jumps in, he secures the shutdown onto Akali. Insane. That's a 500 LP player for you. 500 LP challenger player from C server. Rank 5 on the C server. Or rank 4, something like that. The Alistar is rank 7 right now in Europe and Tiap is rank 1. Six two and 1.5k gold lead for Evelyn compared to Lee Sin. And for the ADC it's a 3k gold lead for the Kaiser so she is really fat and Thanks to the Akali shutdown basically, giving a huge legendary shutdown into her favor. Okay. He's going to clean up the bot lane. This game is insanely close. High elo challenger lobby. But I think the opponents only have one challenger. It's Rain Far Away. I think he's challenger. Sneaky is master. Sync is grandmaster. Uh, the Ezreal is the top one Ezreal in Europe right now. And he's also grandmaster if I'm not wrong. And Nami, I don't know this player. Maybe master or grandmaster. Okay, Elsa is going to jump in, doing a lot of damage onto the Sakali. She is super low life, she has two backports. Oh, it's a two. Okay, two for one. Two for one for blue side. Akali is going to backport and get teleport. She's going to teleport back in. Yasuo is super low life, he's going to die. Akali is going to try and fight the Alistar. Is she going to jump in? Yes, she does. Very greedy, very aggressive. Red team refused to surrender and Akali, I mean Kaiser is going to kill this Ezreal. This Kaiser is just so fat. This Kaiser is just so fat. If Akali doesn't take out Kaiser, I think in team fights Kaiser will just carry super hard right now. 18-18, two dragons in favor of the red team and a 1k gold lead in favor of the red team as well. And now they are trying to rush the next objective which is going to be the cloud dragon the cloud dragon also got nerfed so it's still a decent buff but not oh there was a close one the smile coming in from tier 74 hp left on the dragon very close one 2k gold lead yasuo is split pushing next fight the baron will probably decide the game or the Elder. Oh, probably the Baron buff will decide the game. If the red team gets the Baron buff, they can get 
3 tier 2 turrets and maybe even one additional tier 3 turret. Okay, blue, blue side is trying to trap right here. And red side doesn't have any vision besides... No, they don't have any vision. They literally don't have any vision. Okay, Alistair is scouting. They are really not doing anything right here. Red has a ward at Baron though, so they know when they started. Okay, Yasu is backporting. He's not backporting from the bush. And Akali is jumping onto him. He's like, oh, oops. Did you see the damage? Yeah, I would say the ultimate damage is balanced. Three people are bot side though. Three people are bot side and red side decides to go for the rush onto the Nasher. Is Leeson going to be able to steal it? Alistair pushes him away. Cannon jumps in. He dies. Katarina gets the reset. Nami uses her ultimate. Akali hits the shuriken onto Alistair. He's going to die. But Kaiser is super fat. Kaiser is going to clean up everyone right now. They also have the Baron. Akali, can she do it? She kills Alistair. But Kaiser, she managed to kill Akali. It's a clean ace. She is godlike. And now they can end the game. This is the W for the red side. Evelyn, Kaiser doing super well. Alistair in that team fight. Probably the MVP pushing that Leeson away, knocking him up and prevents him from stealing that Baron and Kaiser cleaning up everyone this is going to be the game Akali tried her best but in the end it wasn't enough three challengers are too strong for this Akali even though Yasuo fed her super hard she can't carry it and that's going for the gameplay see ya